Shouts out to all of my brothers and sisters out there in social media land. I know y'all can't see me. It's uh, I'm in the car. It's dark. Let me see if I can get some light on there. Yeah. But I want to come on here and I wanted to say uh, thank you to all of the parents that brought their children out. We know that that this is. A, let me let, let, let me say this, okay? Because we got some we got some self righteous, hypocritical people out there, especially our, our, our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? That they have a problem with everything that's on the calendar. Understand this: that one of the things that we say is this is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. There is nobody that can add anything. To what the father have done uh, and on all of these days and holidays and stuff like that they're just things on a calendar now we know that jeremiah 10th chapter tells us instructs us learn not the way the of the of the heathens because their customs are vain well the reality is is that we already have learned the way of the heathens in a multiplicity of different ways as we increase in our knowledge we increase of our understanding as we learn better we do better but the problem that i have is when we learn better and then we start trying to do better we automatically expect for everybody else to be in the same place that we are. What the reality is is that everybody ain't going to be in the same place that nobody is because everybody had to go through the same process of learning, the same growth process. So when we tell children to come out uh, on Halloween and we're going to give them their treats, it's not because we are... Uh, we uh, worship what 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 our what our enemies or the heathens call Hallows Eve. It's simply because we aiming to do something different with the lives of our children, and we don't want them on the streets knocking from door to door, trick or treating with strangers. And those are some of the things that we've been accustomed to. Now, I I I, I like to think about me. I'm a parent, and I have four children. And when my children was growing up, I took them trick-or-treating. I dressed them up in costumes. We painted their faces because we couldn't afford to buy them costumes. And we trick-or-treated, and we went and collected candy, and we went and did all of that. And every last one of my children could attest to the fact that they themselves have experienced these things as children. But it was nothing evil about that. We... We weren't taking them trick-or-treating because we was worshiping St. Hollow's Eve or nothing of that nature. We didn't do things for the same reason. One of the greatest problems that we have is that we start learning this information and then we come back with a stick of condemnation upon all of our people as though our people are indulging themselves in the very root of the reason why these things were done at the hands of other people. The reason that other people that created these things done them is far different from the reasons why our people have done them. I wanted to say that because that's wisdom going out right there. That's wisdom going out right there. Now, I am one that says, you know, I, I, in my mindset, I'm like, you know what, we're going to follow in the footsteps of the Messiah. All these different things and these different paganistic, heathenistic things, all of these things existed while the Messiah was walking on the earth. But never did he walk around condemning people for the things that they were doing because he knew that they were only doing the things uh, that they were doing because they were ignorant of the truth behind a particular thing. Therefore, his love, his infinite love became the thing that overshadowed us with no matter what it was that we was doing he met us at the point of our ignorance and at the point of our need and loved us and then taught us and instructed us in ways when we understood those things we can do better same way he told the woman go and sin no more who condemns you i like to say to any brother and sister on social media anybody that i ever came across any information whether it was dealing with christmas whether it was dealing with thanksgiving 
whether it was dealing with Hollows Eve, any man, which whichever one of you can be found without sin, you cast the first rock at the people that are doing something out of ignorance, and you are not doing it because you have come to the understanding or the root cause of what a thing is and where a thing come from. If you yourself have not indulged in none of these things, you'll be the first one to cast the stone. And some children have never been brought up in these things. But even in spite of the fact that they have never been brought up in none of these things, they still have a sin factor. No man on the planet has done only righteousness and don't sin. Nobody has the right to judge anybody. But an unconditional love for the Father's people is what we are supposed to have. And we are supposed to meet people at the point of their need no matter where they at. Because how are you going to get an understanding to people when you can't even identify with people or have a fellowship with people because of the things that they are doing or the things that they believe? This is foolishness. This is foolishness and it's stupidity on the highest level. So brothers and sisters, y'all hear me when I say this. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father have made. Men come along and then they attach things to particular days that God created. But overall, there would be no type of holiday. Even if it was a feast day or what they call a high holy day, there would be no day if God didn't give it to you. So, with that being said, I just want to tell the brothers and sisters, big shouts out for all of our brothers and sisters who have participated in the community event throughout the course of the year. We say thank you. We're most grateful and we're most appreciative of everything that has been done on behalf of these children. And we are going out of our way to meet people wherever they at and impart some life to them. And we didn't get to capture it on camera or none of that. But, you know, the beauty of it is we had one of our young kings, you know what I'm saying? King William Brown of Boom Ministries uh, out there in Atlanta. We called and asked him some questions about getting us some Bibles so that we can put Bibles in the bags of every child. And, and lo and behold, uh, King w William and Boom Ministries, they sent me a box that had 50 Bibles in it. Not only did we give the whole 50 Bibles away, but we also had 100 sacks and we gave, we didn't serve our children with almost 100 sacks. Of, uh, of, of, of of goodness and sweet things so that they don't have to be out on the streets. Their parents don't have to ha uh, take them out on the streets going to strangers' houses and doing things like that. And this is indeed a great day to be alive. We're going to train our children up in the way that they should go and, that, and we're going to hold fast to the Father's promise that when they're old, they will not depart from those things that they have experienced and those things that they have witnessed. But we got to do better, people. We got bonds dropping we got we got Israeli leaders talking about the greatest threat to the state of Israel is the young blacks in America and they telling these things to the United States the people who have had their foot on our people all these years you got all these things transpiring in the earth and where do anybody find time to argue or fuss about a, a, a day that some man put on a calendar ain't no such thing Halloween came to Jeremiah 10th chapter it declares learn not the way of the heathen for their customs is vain for one going to the forest and cut a tree down and then he bring it back and fasten it with nails and wood and he make it where it don't move and then he deck it with silver and gold he said but these trees these things they must need to be born they cannot move on their own they cannot speak neither can they reach out and harm you they cannot make your life better Based Basically, what's being said is that none of these things that a man put on the calendar has the capacity to destroy a man's life. Neither do it have the capacity to make a, a man's life better. So why would we waste our energy on stupidity? When we can take and use these things that our people have become a part of, and we use those things as springboards to bring our people into a specific place and then impart God's righteousness unto them. That's one of the reasons why I'm hated in the Israelite community. 
Not only that, that's one of the reasons why they don't want to hear it. Because everything is purely fleshly. Everything is purely fleshly. When God declares he's going to pull his spirit out on all people, sons and daughters going to prophesy, all going to know him from the least to the greatest. So all the book knowledge and all the things and all the different areas that you can think that your life going to have an effect on somebody, you sadly mistaken. It's the most high God that's going to do those things. But he desired to use us as tools. Tools, but we can't be used as a tool when, when our minds itself has been corrupted and tainted with a false sense of self-righteousness. Every year we have to go through the same process. Every year we have to go through the same thing. So, that being said, this day in my book wasn't about no Halloween. This is the last day of the community event in Kansas City, Missouri. It's the last day, uh, and it just so happened that this Tuesday just so happened to fall on Halloween, and I couldn't think of a better opportunity to do something great than to bring people where they should be. You use something that people are a part of to impart something great to them. You don't worry about what other people are doing, what this person doing, what that person doing, because all of us have been in a place of ignorance at some point in our life. And the Father had mercy on us, had compassion on us, had grace on us, lavished his love on us to see past our fault, whether it was ignorance or whether it was a deliberate state of rebellion. He had mercy and compassion and lavished his love on us. And should not we go and do likewise when it comes to each other? So I want to thank all the brothers and sisters who throughout the course of this summer, have done something great as we sought to get our children to put their guns down and put on the skates as we sought to provide the things for our children where they can have a wholesome environment some place to invest their energy some place to learn as we have sought to provide for the children through, through the time uh, when they need things for the winter months and we have reached out to assist the uh the single parent homes and we have uh, sought to strengthen our brothers and raise our brothers up and make them to understand how important it is in this hour to be a stand-up man, a righteous man, a man to have concern for his children and for his children's mothers, even though they're not with them. And it's been a beautiful, it's been a beautiful season. It's been a beautiful season of putting the Bible down and then practicing the things that are written in the Bible in the world that we are living in. In mine, have we seen them work in the manner that the Father declared that they would work. And by that standard, everybody that have had a hand in anything, whereas the brothers and sisters across the country who have made contributions or sent words of encouragement, or whether it's the brothers and sisters in Kansas City, Missouri, that have consistently brought the children so that they can be exposed to something great, we want to say thank you. And we'll pick this thing back up. Most high willing, he let me live to see the next spring roll around. We'll pick this thing back up the first, the second week in May. And we'll take off running to affect and impact our community. The kingdoms of this, mo uh, uh, this world must become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. But you better find a way to do it. Because ain't nobody gravitating to the church. Ain't nobody gravitating to the wilderness. Ain't nobody coming to the communities all out there in the desert. Ain't nobody coming to them things. If anything going to happen, we must go into the vineyard and reap the harvest that the Most High declared was supposed to be reaped. For the harvest is plenteous. But the labors are few.